Lecture 10 begins. The references used in Lecture 10 are shown below the title. Lecture 10 deals with the volume averaged continuity equation of multi-phase flows. In Lecture 1, the calculation method of the particle fluid multi-phase flows are classified into three types. DNS, Wilerian, Wilerian, and Raglanian, Wilerian, based on the length scale. DNS stands for direct numerical simulation. The Wilerian, Wilerian method is called two fluid model. Each method is outlined in lecture one. In the Raglanian method, independent variables is time only. The dependent variables are the positions. The Lagrangian method is taught in high school physics to calculate mass point or rigid body motion. In the Lagrangian method, the independent variables are time and position, and dependent variables are velocity and pressure. The motion of Continuum like fluid is described by the Eulerian method. The advantage of the NS is that it is strict and empirical assumptions are not needed. The disadvantage is that computational load is heavy. The advantage of the two-fluid model is that computational load is small, but the disadvantage is that many empirical assumptions are needed. The Lagrangian or Lagrangian method explained in the election 10 and 11 is between the DNS and the two-fluid model concerning advantages and disadvantages. This illustration shows an image of the Lagrangian or Eulerian method. For particles, uh, the velocity and the position of individual particles are calculated using the Lagrangian method. For fluid, the calculation is made using the Eulerian method. Equations and variables such as uh, velocity, pressure, and density are specially averaged in the, in the volume with the size of delta x and delta y. <clears throat> in the last slide, I mentioned that for particles, the velocity and the position of individual particles are calculated. And for fluid, especially average values are treated. In the figure on the right, uh, last slide, the averaging is done in the section divided into squares. From now on, we will generalize the average method and treat it rationally. First, the right figure is exp explained. Look at the point marked by the red cross and yellow domain surrounding this point. Consider variables such as velocity, pressure, density, and etc. These variables are function of space coordinate and time t. Let's define the average value of a variable at this point. Regarding averaging, the weighting average is known as a reasonable one. In the weighting average method, the average value at the point X is defined by integration, integration of values near the point of interest. The values are weighted according to the distance from the point X. Weighting function W 
er is used for that purpose. The view er takes a large value near the coordinate x and it decreases as the distance from x increases. Lecture 10 and 11 do not use the specific form of this weighting function. Also, the weighting function does not come out in the final result. This function is needed in the process of combating an expression and equations. <clears throat> average described from now is the weighted average. Suppose an arbitrary physical variable A is a function of the spatial coordinate and time t. The volume averaged A at x is defined by equation one, where the weighting function W is included in the integrand. Note that the mark over bar is used to mean volume average. The above integration is conducted around X. The absolute value of Y minus X is the distance from X. The weighting function W is the function of Y minus X. If A is a constant, A bar is equal to A, so equation two is obtained. It's clear from equation two that the dimension of weighting function W is one by V, V is a volume. Next, let's define the phase volume average. From now, the phase volume average is called simply phase average. The phase average is the average within the volume occupied by the fluid phase only or particle phase only. Let's make the weighting function W dimensionless with V and indicated by the symbol W prime. If you write the volume average A bar using dimensionless weighting function W prime, the volume average A bar can be expressed by the equation shown in the red, red line frame. The phase average A is defined by the equation shown in the second red line frame. The mark angle bracket is used to express phase average. As is easily understood, the phase average is equal to the volume average divided by Vf by V. Vf by V is the volume fraction of a fluid. <coughs> The volume fraction of fluid has a few names. For example, it is called void fraction or porosity or gas holdup. The history of multi-phase flow is not long compared to traditional fluid mechanics. Liquid gas, gas salt and solid liquid have been studied independently. That the naming of some technical words is not unified even today. This is because a few words are used for the same variables. In this lecture, I'm using the Greek symbol alpha for the volume fraction. The field of powder technology, the Greek symbol y is popular for the volume fraction of the fluid. The theme of lecture 10 is to derive the volume average equation of continuity. That converting and manipulating equation is a bit complicated. 
if you can't keep up, skip to the final slide. The final slide show the final form of volume averaged continuity equation. <clears throat> The volume of the domain R is the sum of the volume of fluid and volume of particles. When the integral of equation one is divided into the fluid phase and the particle phase, the second term on the right hand side disappears because the fluid has no value within the particle phase. Therefore, the integration range of equation one changes from V to VF, and equation one becomes equation three. From here on, the integration range for the fluid phase with the weighting function is set to VF. If the integral of equation two is also divided into the fluid phase and the particle phase. It can be separated into the volume fraction of fluid alpha F and volume fraction of particles alpha P. If the right hand side of equation three is transformed in using the dimensionless weighting function W prime, it is found that the volume average is the phase average multiplied by the volume fraction, where phase average is the volume average divided by the volume fraction as shown in equation four. I have shown that definition of the volume average and phase average in the previous slides. As shown in the slide, most terms in the continuity equation and Navier-Stokes equation take the form of time derivative, derivative and space derivative. So we must derive the expression of volume average of those derivatives. In, in lecture 10, I will derive, derive the volume average continuity equation. The volume average Navier-Stokes equation will be described in lecture 11. <clears throat> Let's start with the volume average of spatial derivative of round A, round XI. Equation three is shown on the, the first line. The equation three is the definition of the volume average A, that is A bar. Let's differentiate both sides of this equation with XI. Function containing xi is the weighting function w, so the differentiation is applied only to w. The derivative of w by xi and the derivative of w by yi can be converted by changing the sign. So you can replace round w, round xi with minus round w, the round yi. Applying the integration by part formula to the last form on the second line, the expression includes two terms. The second term becomes the definition of volume average of spatial derivative of A. So the Second term is replaced with a volume average of round A X T over round X I. The first term is volume integral. If we use if we use the Gaussian divergent theorem, this volume integral is transformed to the surface integral, and it becomes the expression on the fourth line. <clears throat> In this transformation, the minus sign 
before the volume integral on the plot line disappeared. The reason why the minus sign disappeared will be explained later. Let's move the volume average of spatial derivative of A to the left hand side and move the spatial derivative of volume average A bar to the right hand side. As a result, equation five is obtained as shown in the yellow frame. Now you find that the volume average of spatial derivative and the spatial derivative of volume average are different. Such expressions appear frequently. From now, please be careful. Here, let's review the gas divergent theorem briefly. Let's consider a volume shown by blue color. Gas theorem says that the value obtain uh, by integrating the normal component of any vector a over the closed surface is equal to the volume integral of the divergent a. I have kindly explained the gas theorem in lecture two. The above figure consider in and out flow from the inside to the outside. Therefore, the unit normal vector is taken outward from the particle surface. When considering the amount from the outside to the inside, that is to the inside of the particle, the normal vector is reversed. If we use the outward, outward unit normal vector, ni in the closed surface, we can use minus ni at the normal vector in this case. So far, I have described how the volume average of spatial derivative of A is represented. From now, I will describe how the volume average of the time derivative is represented. <clears throat> the definition formula equation three for the volume average A bar is shown on the first line. You know that the weighting function W is a function of space only. So I will write W by minus X simply as W when considering time derivative. If the time derivative of A bar is transformed using the difference delta t, the expression shown in the second line is obtained. If the integration range vf t plus delta t of the equation on the second line is divided into vf t and delta vf t, the equation on the third line is obtained. Combining the first and third term in parentheses give the expression on the fourth line. The expression in the red frame on the first line is volume average of the time derivative around round A round T. Therefore, the time derivative of A bar is the sum of two terms as shown in the fifth line. First term is volume average <coughs> of the time derivative of A. The second term is volume average of A after the time delta T divided by the time delta T. The volume for integration in, in the second term is delta Vf. Delta Vf is small because it is the volume increasing in the time delta t. A y t plus delta t in the second term of the 
fifth line is decomposed into two terms as shown on the sixth line. Then you get the equation on the seventh line. The second term on the right hand side can be omitted as a higher order small term. The first term is volume integral of WA, but integration range is a small range of delta VF. This integration will be further transformed in the next slide. <clears throat> First, the last expression in the last slide is shown. If there is no mass transport like evaporation and condensation, the small volume element delta Vf can be expressed as ds times u times delta t using the fluid velocity u near the uh, particle surface. <coughs> If mass transport occurs, fluid velocity must be modified so the small volume element delta Vf is expressed as ds times Vs times delta t using the velocity Vt. When con converting from volume integral to surface integral ds, uh, a surface integral, ds times vsr is multiplied by the outward unit normal vector minus ni because a is a variable of v. The equation on the fifth line of the last slide is shown again in the third line of this slide. Substituting the last term in the second line into the equation in the third line, the time derivative of A bar becomes as shown in the red line frame. From the equation in the red line frame, the volume average of the time derivative of A is given in equation six. <coughs> Once again, the volume average of special derivative of A is shown. Now we are ready to derive the volume average of the continuity equation and equation motion. The derivation of volume average equation motion will be described in lecture 11. <clears throat> now let's start the volume averaging of the continuity equation. First, the continuity equation is shown. The symbol i is used to indicate a particular component and direction. And symbol j is used for symbol that follows Einstein's summation convention. <clears throat> The volume average continuity equation shown on the right. The overbar as drawn in each side, each term. The overbar is symbol of volume average. As shown in the last slide, equation last slide, equation six expresses the volume average of the time derivative. Equation six is shown again in the black line frame. Vsi times Ni can be written Vsj and J. The first term of continuity equation is the volume average of the time derivative of the density. Substituting rho f for A in equation six, 
the volume average of the time derivative of the density can be expressed as shown by the red flame. <clears throat> Equation five in the last slide expresses the volume average of the spatial derivative. Equation five is shown again in the second black line frame. <clears throat> Substituting log f uj for a into equation five, the volume average of the spatial derivative of log f uj can be expressed as shown by the second red frame. Substituting the expression in these two red line frame into the volume average equation of the first line. Give the equation in the third black line frame. Equation seven in the yellow frame is obtained by Combining the integral part, equation seven is the volume average equation of continuity. <clears throat> Both low f and uj on the left hand side are independent unknown variables. So equation seven is not yet a form that can be used for numerical calculation. The spatial average low fuj must be separated into the spatial average low f and spatial average of low j uj. Mm. Equation seven is shown on the first line. In the previous slide, I said that volume average of low fuj product must be separated into the average low f and average uj. This slide describes how to separate low f and uj. On the second line, the relation of the volume average low f uj and the phase average low f uj. As you know already, the phase average value is the volume average value divided by volume fraction free. On the third line, the mass average velocity uj weight is newly defined by equation eight. <clears throat> On the fourth line, the velocity uj is assumed to be the sum of the mass average velocity uj wave plus fluctuation delta uj as shown by equation nine. Substitute equation nine into equation eight. Uj wave in integral can be placed outside the integral. The integral in the Red line frame is the volume average density. It is a phase average density multiplied by the fluid volume fraction alpha f. If we further modify the equation, we will finally get the result on the sixth, sixth line. <clears throat> Now we will derive the final form of the volume average continuity equation. Again, in set equation seven is shown first. In the final form, all, all of the unknown variables such as velocity must be represented by volume average or phase average variables. The volume average and the phase average are compatible with each other through the volume fraction. Equation 11 shows the relation between the volume, volume average and the phase average density. 
the volume average momentum law FUJ is defined by the equation below equation 11. First, substitute the sum of the mass average velocity UJ wave and the deviation delta UJ into the velocity UJ. Next, considering that integral including delta UJ is zero, the volume average momentum log FUJ become the last equation 12. <clears throat> At last, the, the average of density velocity product can be expressed as the product of average density and the mass av uh, average velocity. Mm. Substituting equation 11 and equation 12 into the above equation 7 gives an equation 13. Equation 13 is continuity equation of the goal. The right hand side of equation seven is denoted by the symbol S mass. S mass is called mass source term. This term represents the mass chain due to evaporation or condensation from the particle phase. If there is no evaporation or condensation, S mass equal to zero. For, the, for an incompressible fluid with a constant density, the phase average of the density is the phase, average, phase density itself. And the mass average velocity UJ wave is equal to the phase average velocity UJ. As a result, the volume average continuity equation has a simple form. Strictly speaking, this equation is a phase average continuity equation. As I said before, right hand side is zero if there is no mass transport. This is the end of lecture 10. Thank you.